Okay, welcome to this uh, second video lecture. Um, I'm recording this also on uh, Saturday, so uh, um, I'll probably post it later today. But um, I don't expect you to actually watch this until uh, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, just make sure you watch it in advance of Wednesday's lecture. Um, so in this one, we'll go over some of the numerical precision issues in computers. So um, we won't need this uh, preamble, but um, I've included it anyway. So as you know, in um, computers, all the numbers are represented through bits in a binary representation. So one bit is either a zero or a one. It's true or false. Um, it's one unit um, of information, one binary digit. A byte is eight bits. So um, there's 256 possible combinations of, uh, of eight bits, if each bit is one of two values. So that's 256 possible values for a byte. Uh, we can write this in binary form, and then typically what we do is put this um, 0b um, in front of it. That's the, the prefix to indicate that whatever follows is a binary number. Um, so if we have 0b, 0010, 0110, that's a, a byte. There's eight, eight bits here. Um, so if we have that byte, uh, we can assign, of course, the value to that. So um, our, our least significant bit is zero. So that corresponds to this bit, bit one. So there's zero times one. And then we have one times two plus one times four, zero times eight, zero times 16, one times 32, and zero times 64, and zero times 128. So if we add that up, we get the decimal value for uh, this uh, um, for this binary number. Um, I would have to calculate it now. I didn't calculate it in, in advance, but you can of course convert this to a, um, a, a decimal uh, number. Actually it is so 32 plus 4 plus 2, so that will be 38. Another common base um, that is used in uh, in computers is hexadecimal base, so that's base 16. So we go now from basically base 2, number that can be either 0 or 1. This is base 8, number uh, uh, can be, um, uh, or it's, it's not base 8, it's, it's 8 bits. Um, so in base 2, this is represented like this. Um, hexadecimal base, um, there, there we represent each number as a um, as a number in base 16. So um, this we can get to this with uh, two four-bit numbers. So a four-bit combination. In, in other words, zero one one zero, or one out of um, a, a number that is has a value between zero and fifteen. That is a number in base 16. So those four bits that is called a nibble because um, it's smaller than a byte. Uh, so that nibble is a number between 0 and 15, and so that's one unit or, or one um, digit in uh, hexadecimal base. So we can, uh, um, since we have um, a need for symbols beyond the number 0 through 9, we add A, B, C, D, E, and F. Uh, so A for 10, B for 11, and so on, and then F for 15. So the largest digit in a hexadecimal number will be F. So in this case, um, we use the prefix 0x to signify this hexadecimal number. And so the first number will be the value of, um, uh, or the first hexadecimal digit will be the value of, those, of that uh, most significant nibble and the next digit will be the value of the least significant digit. So in this case, if we have 0x, uh, so we'll have a number 0x and then two, two digits, hexadecimal digits, we can, which can be between 0 and 9 or A, B, C, D, E, or F. So for example, if we have 0x10 or 0x10, um, that is going to be 16 because um, we have 0 as the least significant hexadecimal digit and we have one for the most significant hexadecimal digit and that one um, has this prefix or has this value this 16 okay um, and then we can go to values like 0x21 um, which is going to be 37 if you add 2 times 
16, which is 32, plus 1, um, that is 37. Okay. Uh, this is 33, I would imagine. Uh, so typo there. Um, an integer number in uh, all computing systems is a 4 byte number. So it uh, has as a, a largest, um, uh, it has a 32 bit um, position. So it's uh, um, four times longer than this byte. It's four bytes. Um, that gives it the maximum value um, that is 2 to the uh, 32nd. Actually, it's 2 to the 32nd minus 1 because there's one value that is uh, reserved for 0 and then there's uh, 2 to the 32nd minus 1 other values that are larger than 0. zero. So those are the, the, the numbers that can be represented as integers. And of course, if you go down to signed integers where you have positive and negative values, um, then you only have a 2 to the 31st minus 1 as a maximum integer number. Um, integers are closely related to memory addresses in computers. So a memory address on a 32-bit system will be a 32-bit number. Um, and then on a 64-bit system, it will be an 8-byte um, number or a 64-bit number. So that allows for more memory um, addresses to be used on a 64-bit system. Now, finally, a float um, is an 8-byte um, number and uh, then there's a double precision which doubles um, that again so that we have even more precision for floating point numbers. So to use these bases uh, we can uh, use some of the functions that are present of course in um, in Python and so one thing to look at is uh, the help for um, the int function or the int type um, in, in a sense. So let's uh, scroll up here um, what you see is that we can specify with the function int and give it an object. And this object can either be a string or a number. Um, and if we use a string, we can actually specify um, a base as well. So the base by default is 10. So we'll just use regular base 10 um, numbers, which we're of course very accustomed to. But if we specify um, base equal to zero, it will try to interpret it from this prefix. And if, and if we specify, uh, if we specify um, base 2, um, it will interpret it, this as a binary number. And of course, then we can't specify the prefix anymore. Um, and we can specify, for example, base um, 16. So if we use this now, we can specify here with base 0 um, and with a prefix 0b that we want this number 0010 0, 1, 1, 0 um, to, interpret it, to be interpreted as a binary number. We can do the same thing by telling it explicitly that we want this to be in base 2 um, and foregoing the prefix altogether. Okay. Um, but Python is actually smarter than that and, and most computing languages are smarter than that. Um, we can just specify 0b as the prefix anywhere where we would use a regular number. Um, we can specify 0o for octal numbers, that's another um, often used prefix. And then we can, of course, use 0x for hexadecimal numbers. And uh, you, you'll very often see, of all these um, prefixes, the one that you'll see most often is the one for hexadecimal numbers. So 0x26 um, here, for example. And uh, um, as you can see, all of those are the same value, 38. So uh, we have our binary representation for 38 here. This is the octal representation for 38. So in the octal representation, which is base 8, the only numbers that appear are the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Um, so no number larger or equal to the base um, can occur. So in binary numbers, there will never be a 2, only um, symbols 0 and 1 that are less than 2. Okay. So this is uh, how um, integer numbers are represented in, uh, in computers. Now for floating point numbers, um, it's a little bit different. Um, so uh, of course there's, a, there's an infinite and uncountable number of floating point numbers that you can write down, but a computer still has to represent that in a fixed number of, um, of bits um, in memory. So there are issues with precision that play a role here. Um, and that will definitely crop up later in the semester. 
um, probably on Wednesday, which is by when I would like you to look at this uh, video. So um, we can define a floating point number, which we've done here um, explicitly by using a floating point, and we can add a one to that. And of course, if we print that value, let me do that here for 10 to the seven, um, or for nine times 10 to the seven plus one, uh, we can write that that value and as you can see we've added one and the floating point number can still um, can still make sense of that now what happens if we use a larger number uh, what about 10 to the 14th well we still have our one here but at some point well this is not what I wanted to type 10 to the 18th Suddenly my one is gone here. So what happened there? Um, the issue we have here is that um, I've used a floating point representation for this first number here. And that floating point number has a certain precision. And this one is just less than that precision. So we've kind of lost the one because it's less than the than the smallest precision that can be represented um, for this floating point number. Okay, so how are floating point numbers then represented in memory? Um, all of these use uh, an IEEE convention um, for numbers where you know if we have x, which is the number we're trying to represent, this is the floating point number, this is our 9.0071 times 10 to the 18, so that's x. Um, it will have a sign, of course, plus or one, that's one bit. And then we have um, a, a, a so-called, well, let's, uh, let's go to the exponent first. So we have a um, times two to the power e minus e, um, big E minus small e. So since these are binary numbers, it makes sense that they have as a, a base um, uh, two here. So factors of two. Um, so we'll have big E, which is an exponent, which can be either eight, eight bits or 11 bits for double precision or for single precision and double precision respectively. So that means that um, this can be between zero and 255 for um, single precision floating point numbers and can be between zero and 248 uh, or 246 um, for, uh, for double precision, okay? Then there's a constant bias, which basically subtracts half of that so that um, E minus E uh, can go from a positive to a negative value that's equal. So from minus 127 to plus 127 for single precision numbers and from minus 1023 to plus 1023 um, for double precision numbers. So, so these are the exponents that are possible um, in, this, um, on, um, in the exponent of, uh, of the factor 2 here. Okay, so that scales the entire number. What is it that gets scaled? That's this M here. Um, that's the so-called mantissa. And that's always one dot and then F, where F <coughs> is a fraction between zero and one. And it's a fraction be because it's encoded with a limited number of bits. So it will always be um, an exact rational number. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's encoded through these bits, so we get one dot and then bits, 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 bits. Um, the precision of this number is now given by um, the limitation of this um, mantissa, because it only has a, a, a limited number of bits. And um, the machine precision is actually given by this um, one over two to the power n, um, where n is either 23 bits or 52 bits, and so if we calculate what that is, um, that is supposed to be, so one over two to the power, let's go with 23, um, that will give us a value that's about 10 to the minus seven for um, the precision of floating point numbers, and one over two to the 52nd, which is about 10 to the minus 16. And so you'll see that once we start to um, have larger powers here, 10 to the 18, that was above 10 to the 16, or the precision of one relative to this larger number. 
is going to be 10 to the minus 18 or almost minus uh, 19 because it's uh, there's a large uh, um, uh, a large nine in front of this. So th this is almost 10 to the 19. So that relative precision will be 10 to the minus 19. And so that means that this um, one that I'm adding is actually less than the precision for this double precision um, floating point number with 64 bits. So that is something we're going to have to pay attention to because anytime we implement some um, floating point algorithm in uh, computers, we will have these um, these errors. We will have these um, precisions that we have to take into account. And it could be that some of these precision, some of this precision, um, starts to play a role, right? Um, it could be that it becomes larger um, in in a way that we do uh, we run an algorithm. Some algorithms are very sensitive to uh, to this machine machine precision. But the first thing you'll have to keep in mind is that when you do things like this, adding large numbers to small numbers, that is when precision effects are going to show up, um, and, and most likely will show up. Uh, so in computers, if there is any way that you can avoid two things, um, you want to avoid adding small numbers to large numbers, or um, you want to avoid subtracting two big numbers from each other. Um, if there is a way in which you can rewrite an algorithm so it doesn't subtract a big number from another big number with a small difference, or so it doesn't add small numbers to already very big numbers, um, then that is something that is going to increase the numerical stability um, of your calculation. So that is something to, um, to pay attention to. And we'll see an example of that um, in the next lecture where um, we can calculate what the numerical precision is and how this numerical precision plays a role in our, um, in our algorithm. And then we can also play a, a, a little trick on our algorithm to make it more numerically stable and increase the precision of our algorithm um, just by changing the order of some operations um, in, in our algorithm. But more about that in the next lecture.